So you had done, is that where the snake charming thing came into play with you as a golf coach or was that pre golf coach? Oh, this was pre golf coach days. Um, another reason with that labeling was I, I grew up in that scene, the metalhead golf scene. Um, and uh, with the snake charming, that, that was something I got into. Um, I'd already qualified as a counselor, qualified as a coach already, but um, I wasn't ready. I didn't feel ready. I was seeing people on the side and I was working a bit. Um, I would also do sometimes performances. I was pretty busy. I was always doing lots of things, which was both entertaining, but at the same time, it was wearing me out. But the snakes, so they... They will. I, I made a video that I put on my uh, YouTube recently about how they actually helped give me the confidence. And um, it was from snake interaction, which started out through snake belly dancing. And my belly dancing group, we were dancing with snakes. And it's not uncommon. It's not a weird thing. <laughs> um, and then what I did, I would start going to golf clubs and metal clubs and dancing on stage there to my kind of music. Uh, I absolutely loved it. Um, I didn't do it for too long, though, because it's just exhausting and it's, you know, it's not fair on the snakes to be moving them around so much. But uh, it was something that I ended up doing hosting workshops and teaching women like in the sacred space and ritualistic setting that you can move with the snake and you can actually learn with the snake's energy. It reminds us to shed what's no longer needed. Oh. And this is the thing. This is the thing. Like, as above, so below, as within, so without. We are a microcosm of the macrocosm. Those are three of the hermetic principles right there that with nature, we see with the cycles, uh, with autumn, winter is like death, and then there's a new cycle again, there's the new, and then there's the old, and it's shedding, and it's the same with the snakes. It's the same with the moon cycle. And we humans seem to have been like divorced from this concept that it's all part of our inner cycle is to shed. <laughs> We cling on to our skin. We cling on to our skin with a snake. An unhealthy snake is a snake that doesn't shed properly. It's a healthy snake is one that sheds with ease. And that's what I was teaching people. That's interesting. I like the way you expressed that there. I mean, it's similar to what we're talking about here. It's the, the moving through, the growing through the traumas and the pains and becoming a new version of themselves. I mean, that's what the snakes do, right? They become a better, newer version of themselves and very symbolic. I like how that works. And um, mm -hmm. Because you had actually tried to do in your golf coaching thing, like you said, similar to what Tony was doing with all the music stuff. So you had people come in there and put in on your kind of music and et cetera. Yeah. I mean, I must admit, like, with that. So what happened was I got pretty disillusioned with uh, the coaching scene. I decided to pursue back with counseling again. And um, what I did was I would start doing animal assisted therapy. So in my counseling practice, I'd also offer as an option for people who either had like a fear of snakes, I could help there, but also just people who wanted to boost self esteem, people who were traumatized um, to hold a snake, actually, I mean, provided they haven't got like a massive fear of it, but it's quite a wild creature, not many people are used to handling it. So to hold it and to actually like survive the experience and realize, oh, it wasn't a big deal. It was quite invigorating it's boosts your self-esteem it boosts personal power and it's just that shift that some people need to actually change their perspective and help them with their trauma a bit 